Chapter 34 Abigail Nelson Abigail heard the phone ringing inside as she fit her key into the doorknob, her other hand full of groceries. She turned the key and pushed the door open. She dropped the groceries on the table and pulled her phone from her purse. Hello? She listened silently as a monotone voice repeated a recorded message. Gabe walked into the room as she lowered the phone from her ear and stared at the screen. Abigail jumped, pressing her phone to her chest. I didn't know you were back. I didn't mean to startle you, Gabe said. Who was that? It was the school, Abigail said. She tried to keep her voice even. Ever since Trayden's accident, ever since the unguarded started disappearing, she felt like there were moments when the slightest movement would push her over the edge and she would sink into a corner and let the pressure crush her. Trayden's missed a class. I know he left for school this morning. Abigail pulled her stress inside, fighting to hide her physical symptoms. She set her phone down, proud that her fingers weren't shaking. I used to play hooky with my brother, Gabe said, a small shrug. Abigail tried to talk herself through this logically. It wasn't unheard of for a teacher to accidentally mark someone absent, or for a senior to skip a class. Nothing unusual. Everything was normal. She still couldn't shake the feeling. Trayden doesn't skip class, Abigail said, and with all the weird things going on, I'm worried. Maybe he's feeling sick and had to go back to the hospital. I think he would have got more than a recorded message. Gabe moved closer to her, one hand out as if he meant to comfort her, touch her. Their eyes met as they realized it at the same time. He took a breath and changed directions, reaching for the groceries instead. He pulled a block of cheese from one of the plastic bags and held it in his large hands. He studied the cheese like it held the secrets of the universe. I know you've been worried about him. Gabe turned the cheese over. I worry about you, too. You need to know that. That I do care. Abigail didn't know what hurt worse. When he was cold and aloof, pretending that it was easy for him to have this wall between them, or when he tried to make her feel better by acknowledging it was hard for him. So many years of walking side by side, unable to lean on each other, unable to get closer, a missing descendant creating an impenetrable wall between them. How long would he hold out? How long would the bond demand his full devotion? You're right. It was probably a mistake. Trayden's fine. Abigail took the cheese from Gabe's hand and put it in the fridge, keeping her back straight, a fake smile on her lips. You could check the map, Gabe said, just to be sure. It was a peace offering. Gabe would never suggest using the Descendant technology casually in the middle of the day, but he wanted her to know he cared, and she heard the message. They cleared the table and Abigail pulled the map out of the hidden compartment. She rolled it out and spread it across the clean surface. Gabe leaned closer, their shoulders an inch from touching. She placed her thumb in the small square in the bottom corner of the map. The surface flashed beneath her hand and began to glow. The map looked like a satellite picture taken from space. The Earth's surface cast in its own shadow. The light array was not limited to modern electrical lights that were lit with technology. The countries with the largest populations glowed the brightest. Abigail put a finger on the map and turned to the Earth until the shape of the western coast of North America was centered. She placed her pointer fingers close together and then pulled them apart, dragging them toward the outside of the image. The map shifted, zooming in. Do you see him? Gabe asked too quickly. He paced away from the map and then back again, exhaling his breath next to her while she looked, like he did care, and he was not immune to the anxiety that constantly sat on her chest that the forces they fought would someday come too close to home. He was usually better at covering his emotions, but his clear vulnerability in this moment wedged into the already weak cracks in her heart. She let her fingers slide closer, almost touching his hand, when she noticed something weird. The map zoomed in to Southern California, but the lights were missing in a large area. Abigail used her fingers to spin the map and zoom in closer. She wasn't wrong. There were no lights. A good part of Northern Los Angeles was blank. Not the dark, energy-absorbing emptiness she saw when the Fenris were present, but the blank emptiness that engulfed the map where life failed to thrive. An entire section of the city looked completely deserted lifeless, like the middle of the Sahara Desert. Something's wrong, Abigail said. There's no one here. She placed her hand on Gabe's, not in the comforting way she had intended a moment before, but with a desperate pressure, wanting him to be able to see what she saw. Gabe leaned closer. How is this possible? I don't know, Abigail answered. She pulled her hand away, the heat from his skin beginning to seep deeper. Gabe paced back and forth again, 
his body stiff with tension. She wished she could calm him, reassure him he knew how to fight an enemy, but how would he protect them from something he didn't understand? Is it an evacuation? Gabe asked. No, it's moving, spreading out. Abigail zoomed in with her fingers until houses and streets became clear, until she saw the familiar shape of her own neighborhood, the outline of her own house dark and shadowed, and it's coming closer, toward us. Gabe took three long steps to the front door and threw it open. He stepped out and looked up at the sky, like he expected the sun to be blotted out. He moved like an animal, graceful and powerful, pent up, always ready to spring. On the map, Gabe's light burned a golden yellow orange, the aura of a guardian. Her aura pulsed a soft yellow, the same as an average human. Abigail watched as the emptiness approached them on the map, until it was right over them. She stared with her eyes wide as their own auras were engulfed and disappeared. Nothing happened. She felt no sensation or loss. She could still breathe. She studied the map. They were gone. No light, not her own. Not even Gabe's. Abigail watched the map for another moment and then moved to the porch with Gabe. Do you see anything? Feel anything? Gabe asked. The confusion on his face caused deep wrinkles in his forehead as he stared at the sky. Abigail wanted to reach up and smooth them out. Instead, she took a step back. No, Abigail shrugged. There's nothing. She watched an old man walk by with his dog on a leash. She could see his yellow energy pulsing from his core. She looked at Gabe, his orange aura weaving powerfully around his solid frame. I can see your aura out here, just not on the map. Maybe the map has a glitch. Maybe it's broken. In only one place? Gabe asked, shaking his head. No. No, your vision is being blocked. He's preventing you from watching. Who? She knew the answer. The demon who stole Gabe's descendant all those years ago. The man who is taking the children out from under them now. The leader of the Triune? Yes. He knows I work with the Watcher. He knows you're out there. Even if he knows exactly where I am, why would he block me from seeing myself? What good would that do? Gabe pressed his lips together, his arms lifted slightly, like he was ready to sweep her off her feet and carry her away from here. Then his fingers tightened into fists. He doesn't know you're here. But he's blocking me from seeing myself. He's not. He doesn't know. Abigail's worry boiled over, and she had to brush an angry tear from her cheek. What doesn't he know? What are you talking about? He doesn't know where you are. Just that you exist. Okay, why is he blocking me from seeing Los Angeles? Gabe's mouth opened slightly, a look somewhere between excitement and terror. You need to find Trayden, Gabe said. Call him. Get him home now. I want both of you here, safe, together. Abigail rocked back in surprise. Tell me what's going on. What does Trayden have to do with this? Gabe took a deep breath. If Caden Bachman is trying to hide something from you, but he doesn't know where you are... Then he can only block your vision from what he's doing, from where he is. Don't you see? It means he's here, Abigail. After chasing leads from Mexico to Indonesia, the leader of the Triune is right here. <laughs>